Hey folks, this is Riker with a video on my predictions for BlizzCon 2023, which is right around the corner, November 3rd and November 4th. You can either watch this before BlizzCon to see how many of my predictions come true or watch it after BlizzCon to see how wrong I was. As a reminder, folks, I will be attending BlizzCon this week. I'll be live streaming something Diablo from the show floor. I don't know what. And I'll release a video on any major Diablo developments as soon as possible. If you're not familiar with my channel, I am Diablo centric, but I do dip my toes in a bit of everything Blizzard and following the general happenings of Blizzard and what happens internally uh, via journalistic leaks and deep dive and interview pieces over the years is something that has always been of interest to me. So we're going to talk a little bit about every franchise that Blizzard covers. So, looking here, we have the opening ceremony. What do we predict to be revealed at the opening ceremony? Well, any new game or expansion will be revealed during the opening ceremony. If it is not revealed during the opening ceremony, it's not happening at any other time. All the other panels are reserved for deeper dives into what was already touched upon. So even a, a what's next panel, for instance, it's only gonna expand upon something that was first revealed in the opening ceremony. So, otherwise, looking at the schedule here, we see WoW, Overwatch, WoW, Hearthstone, Warcraft, Rumblings, that's Arclight Rumble, the mobile game, WoW on day two, Overwatch, Diablo 4, Community Night, and uh, La Seraphim appearance. So, what do we not see here on the schedule? One, we don't see StarCraft. Two, we don't see Heroes of the Storm. Three, we don't see Odyssey, Codename Odyssey, the Blizzard new survival game. Now, is it possible that there will be panels that just haven't been revealed yet? Well, first off, is there room for any? Opening ceremony to what's next? You know what? There is room for some kind of hidden panel here. Opening ceremony does not take two and a half hours. So I do expect after opening ceremony, there's going to be some kind of other panel that just isn't on the schedule yet. Otherwise, one hour, one hour, one hour, one hour, no hidden panels there. Day two, hour and a half makes sense. Hour, then two hours, 15 minutes, that's a bit long. We might have another hidden panel in there. So there's room for about two hidden panels throughout the schedule. Does that mean we're going to get the reveal of the Blizzard survival game? I don't think so. So again, Codename Odyssey is the internal name that was leaked. That's not what the game is going to be called. But we know that Blizzard has revealed that they are working on a survival game. We know that it's pretty early. They're still recruiting or they still have been recruiting. So I still think it's too soon to reveal Odyssey. However, there is this spot on the schedule. Two, in fact. Secondly, Heroes of the Storm, for all intents and purposes, seemed to be dead. It did, however, just receive a patch. I still don't expect either of those panels to touch upon Heroes of the Storm. I don't expect anything at all Heroes of the Storm at BlizzCon, sadly. StarCraft. We know that under Activision, StarCraft 3 and WarCraft 4 would never happen. Activision just does not believe in the RTS as a, as a genre that generates enough Revenue. This is why we saw the systematic dismantling and or uh, attrition of all the RTS talent within Blizzard as they realized StarCraft 3 is never happening, WarCraft 4 is never happening, let's go make our own studio. Uh, and so again, a lot of this talent has left and they're working on their own spiritual successor to StarCraft 2. Of course, we're talking about Stormgate from Frost Giant Games, amongst other uh, studios that have been made from former Blizzard talent. So we are not getting a reveal of StarCraft 3. We are not getting a reveal of WarCraft 4. However, under Microsoft, now that the acquisition has gone through, Microsoft does care about the RTS. They do Age of Empires 4, uh, among other titles. So I believe that War WarCraft 4 and StarCraft 3 are back on the menu, but we need to now start building up a team and hiring talent to work on this. So it is five plus years away. I do, however, think that we might get a reveal of a StarCraft mobile game. Why? We had Diablo Immortal. We have now Warcraft Arc Arclight Rumble that is releasing around BlizzCon or at BlizzCon. So those are two of Blizzard's major IPs on mobile now. And some years ago, it was made explicit by Activision Blizzard. We are working on bringing all of our IPs to mobile. StarCraft is an IP that is owned. It is something that has value. I do believe some kind of StarCraft mobile game has been in development, or some potentially more than one. There's different iterations. I don't know, but certainly something has been done there. The question is just whether it's been brought all the way to 
a state of development where it's ready to be revealed. And I do believe it is highly, highly possible, if not quite likely, that we're going to get some kind of a mobile StarCraft game reveal this BlizzCon. Probably during the opening ceremony, and that might be one of those other two panels. I don't think it'll be both of them, but I think it might be one of them. Separately, it's also possible we see the reveal of yet another IP. So if we work on the assumption that there are two secret hidden panels here, again, one could be for StarCraft Mobile and one could be for either Odyssey or a new IP that they have ready to reveal. And just to cut through the industry jargon, IP, uh, intellectual property, generally means franchise. Not quite, but uh, close enough. Now, it's also possible we might see the reveal of two StarCraft titles. That would be insane, but we know that StarCraft as an IP has been valuable to Activision Blizzard. However, they were trying to branch out of the RTS. Last we had heard from leaks, summer 2019, there was a StarCraft FPS game in the works that was shelved and all that talent was moved on to Overwatch 2 and Diablo 4 to get those games out sooner. We know in the past, Blizzard tried to make StarCraft Ghost, another branching out from the RTS genre. There have been multiple attempts over the years to make something StarCraft happen outside of the RTS. Maybe that StarCraft FPS was rebooted and is in some state where it can be revealed more. I don't think Ghost is on the menu anymore, but I think a revival of, of the FPS, I think it is possible that Blizzard learned from BlizzCon 2019 and they know we cannot reveal a mobile game without another mainline installment in the franchise. The major issue at BlizzCon 2019 and the Diablo Immortal fiasco was they announced they, they revealed Diablo 4, sorry, they revealed Diablo Immortal without revealing Diablo 4 or even hinting at it. Had they revealed Diablo 4 first and then Diablo Immortal, no one asterisk would have been upset. Very few people would have been upset and would have been a very different reaction overall. It was the fact, and we know this because that's what Bethesda did with the Elder Scrolls. They teased Elder Scrolls 6 with nothing but a title and some stupid mountains, and then they revealed their, their mobile game and no one cared. No one was upset and it was fine. I would hope that Blizzard learned this. And so now, if they're going to reveal a mobile StarCraft game after not having any mainline installment in the StarCraft franchise since 2000, 2010 is when StarCraft 2 released, and 2014, no, 13, is when Legacy of the Void released, I believe, the last expansion. So it's, it's been whatever, it's been about a decade since anything StarCraft has happened. So, bam, StarCraft mobile game? Yeah, that's going to be upsetting. But, new StarCraft game, and by the way, StarCraft mobile game, no one's upset anymore. So that could be the two spots. Could be right after opening ceremony, we get the new StarCraft FPS game. And then on day two, we get StarCraft Mobile Edition, which is not going to be an RTS. It's probably going to be some kind of tower defense or maybe something based on a popular StarCraft custom map. In the same way that Warcraft Arclight Rumble is not a mobile WoW. It's some other game better suited for a mobile device within with, with a, a, a Warcraft skin on top of it. So that aside, let's move on to Warcraft. Expansion is going to be revealed. That is, I'm I'm 99.9% .9 sure we're going to get an expansion reveal. That's Blizzard's two-year cadence. So, every second BlizzCon, we get the reveal of another Star uh, Warcraft expansion because they release an expansion every two years. So, we're about that time for a new WoW expansion. And uh, based on some leaks and speculation and internal hints, probably going to be some kind of dwarf-based expansion. I think we'll see something about Kaz Algar, maybe some kind of new evil dwarf faction. For Overwatch 2, I expect the reveal of a new hero, maybe one or more new maps, maybe a hint at the next PvE event for Overwatch. I don't expect any major surprises here for Overwatch 2, it should be pretty straightforward. For WoW Classic, I'm expecting the whole uh, WoW Classic Plus thing happening uh, in the form of seasonal content that's gonna... Uh, change the experience on a rotating basis, similar to uh, Diablo. Maybe we get a reveal of Cataclysm coming to WoW Classic. For Hearthstone, I expect the reveal of another expansion. I don't have much more to say on that one. Warcraft Rumblings, that's going to be Warcraft Arclight Rumble. We're getting the full, uh, the full release, so they're going to just do a deep dive on that game. Again, no major surprise there, I don't think. 
On day two, the WoW deep dive. The fact that we have three WoW panels, right? We have WoW What's Next, WoW Classic What's Next, and then WoW deep dive. It could actually be that the Diablo 4 campfire chat will be like two hours. Maybe there is no hidden panel here. Overwatch 2 we covered. Now, interestingly that Diablo 4 does not have any dedicated presence on day one. I do wonder, maybe the hidden panel might be a Diablo 4 What's Next right after the opening ceremony. So Diablo 4 obviously is what I'm going to talk about the most here. What are my predictions for D4 at BlizzCon 2023? It was months ago, I believe it was at Gamescom, that Rod Ferguson uh, had said that there will be annual expansions for D4. It's unclear whether that was uh, just a mis uh, that we misunderstood what he meant. But if it is annual expansions for D4, that means we're looking at a summer 2024 release of Expansion 1 for D4. And if that's the case, it makes sense to reveal the expansion at BlizzCon. So I very much think that an expansion reveal is quite likely. Now, outside of that, what if, what would this expansion be about? Well, I think that with the end state of Diablo 4 and where we are in the game now, I think naturally what's going to unlock is the second half of the continent we are on. The world of D4 is roughly divided into two major continents with some smaller islands, or I guess you can call them small continents, but really two major land masses, the eastern and the western one. We are in the northern half which forms 60 to 70 percent of the eastern continent. So I think we're going to have unlocked now the southern, the southern rather half, that's my regional dialect, uh, the southern half of the eastern continent unlocked. And I think it's going to be Mephisto themed. We end on the note of Mephisto being the next major threat and Mephisto's ancient seat of power in sanctuary in the world was in the southern half of the continent which is just a stone's throw away of basically where we are able to reach geographically in the game currently. We're talking about Travancore, we're talking about uh, the, 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 the Zakarum temples. This is where the Zakarum faith was, uh, was built up, had its high temple, and that's where Mephisto infiltrated and usurped the power of the Zakarum faith. So it, I think we're coming back to Diablo to act Three, uh, we're gonna see Kurast again. We're gonna visit Travancore. We're gonna see the Durants of Hate. We're gonna go all the way back there, revisit those familiar locales. Probably some more jungly things. Uh, perhaps an exploration of some of the more Diablo three like Witch Doctor lore areas, um, as the Witch Doctors are from that part of the continent. Not exactly the same jungles, but we're gonna see some jungle themed stuff. I'm pretty sure. And outside of that. I think that's going to include a new class, and I think the class would probably be related somehow to the Zakarum faith. I think this is where we bring in whatever the paladin of D4 will be. So throughout Diablo lore and history, there have been different kind of types of paladin type characters. You have the paladins, you have the, uh, the crusaders, you have the templars. So they're all different sects, so I think they're likely to create a new sect. It might revolve around the renewed Zakarum faith, since the, the Zakarum faith, again, was corrupted and there were sects that were disbanded. So I think either they're going to just straight up take the Templar, or they might make an entirely new sect of the faith. And that would explain why as well. This new character is joining alongside this new adventure. It's, it's got to be tied, or it doesn't have to. It's likely to be tied to the region and to the ongoing events. Again, I am expecting it to be a Mephisto centric expansion, but I do think Diablo will make an appearance. I think he'll somehow be involved. He'll either be involved in the story or he's going to just make an appearance at the very end. We're not fighting Diablo in this expansion, I don't think, but I think we're going to set him up for expansion two is when we fight him. So I think Mephisto is going to be trying to bring him back, likely, and we might get a Pyrrhic ending where we defeat Mephisto, but there always has to be some kind of downer ending in a Diablo game. The downer ending is Diablo is back. So either they just reserve Diablo for that final that final scene, or they might weave him into the story a bit more. The, the, the way that they wove Mephisto into the story of uh, Diablo 4's base campaign. I don't think it would be just a surprise at the very end. So if he's not a character that we interact with in some way, it's probably going to be hinted at or 
uh, a part of the plot that Mephisto is trying to bring back Diablo and we must stop him before he does that. And then we de we defeat Mephisto and oh, that actually brings back Diablo. We thought we did a good thing, but we ended up doing a bad thing. That's this seems quite apropos. Mephisto, the brilliant mastermind, mm, yes, that was my plan all along. I do also expect with the expansion to launch some kind of major feature being added to the game. So it could be the rune words that we saw uh, revealed originally in 2019. The rune words that aren't rune words. Uh, so they don't operate like D2 rune words. They're this two socket system where you have a trigger and an effect. So if X, then Y. And you can create whatever combination you want there. So it's like if you drop beneath 50% health, then you generate you know, a barrier for 100% of your health. W whatever, a random example off the top of my head, but that's sort of how they worked. So either we get that system, because we can't really get D2 rune words with there being so few sockets in gear in general, right? The max sockets we have is two. Can't really make an interesting rune word system with that, outside of the one that they devised of the trigger and effect. We might also see something like mercenaries come as a feature. Uh, it was a D2 feature, it was a D3 feature. Both treated in different ways, but I do expect mercenaries to come at some point with D4. I expect every class to get at least one more skill. I don't expect the level cap to rise. I don't expect the paragon cap to rise. So I'm expecting more options, but not more power in that regard. Like if, if we get new skills, we're not getting more skill points, I don't think. I do expect world tier five to be revealed and maybe they might even reveal some kind of new feature, uh, either that or, or they'll maybe talk about Season 3's um, competitive leaderboard activity. I don't know that they're super ready to talk about Season 3 yet, given we basically just started Season 1, uh, Season 2 rather, but th and this is kind of the same thing happened with Gamescom, where it was like a month into Season 1 that Gamescom happened, and they revealed Season 2. If there's no expansion reveal, then 100% they have to talk about Season 3, but we do know that the leaderboard activity, that they didn't want to just add leaderboards to D4, they wanted to add leaderboards in a way that made sense, and so they're developing an activity specifically related to leaderboards uh, that ties together and fits naturally. So we might get the reveal of that. Uh, if not that, then I think we get some kind of new activity reveal, uh, perhaps with the expansion. Maybe we'll get the reveal of some kind of Haradric cube as part of the expansion. I don't think the expansion is going to be loaded with all of these things though, like Mercenaries, cube, rune words, uh, and an activity. I think that's a lot for one expansion one year post-release. I think they're probably going to pace themselves a bit more. But some combination of those things, I think, is likely. So I think that about sums up my, my expectations, my predictions. But I turn the question to you folks. What are your BlizzCon predictions? Otherwise, if you're watching this after BlizzCon, Come rate my predictions. And remember to come by twitch.tv slash Riker to uh, watch my live stream, and uh, we can talk about what's been revealed. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch, Patreon, and YouTube supporters for making these videos possible. If you enjoyed this video, please share it. Check out these other videos, and subscribe to join Riker's Raiders for more gaming content.